crawl front, plenty of food out back here. Um, if you need to go outside to catch the Wi-Fi and, and catch the uh, bear store, you can do that. If you want me to interrupt every 10 minutes and give you an update, I can do that too. Although some of you probably have it DVR'd. So um, real quick, and John, you can help me out with this. If you are a first time guest, John, you can just give him the microphone so we can hear him. Name where you're from and then what type of investing you do. We'll just start on that side and kind of work our way. <laughs> there we go. Hi, my name is Erica. I'm from Indiana, and I'm residential Welcome. Don't be shy. Thank you for shy. All right. Feel like Donahue. If y'all remember Donahue, first officer. Hopefully, get some information with them so we can share some more information about flipping and reading houses. Any other first time guests not too shy? <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Trinette Lindsay. I am from Chicago. I am a realtor and investor. I am new to flipping, so I'm just looking uh, to get more information and some investing in Indiana. Network. Fantastic. Thank you for My name is Dylan Black. Um, I'm, I'm from Sherville, Indiana, and I'm just learning this book. Cool. I favor really tall around Dylan. <laughs> uh, I'm Eric Caparello. I'm from Portage. I do uh, residential, and I'm curious about the whole Airbnb. So. Anyone else? Thank you. So real quick, um, last month we did tax lien investing. Who participated in the sale last week? Or is it this week? It was last week or the beginning of the month. Anyone participate? Nobody here bought anything? Crazy. Dave, you? Do you do it at all? Okay. I don't do it either. It's out of my comfort zone. No. All right. Who did something fun this past month? Bought a house, sold a flip, bought a rental, did a private money loan, went to a seminar and learned something. <laughs> What'd you do? Well, um, it hasn't closed yet, but my latest flip is due to close Monday. Okay. So I'm really excited. Woo! <laughs> Almost to the finish line. Um, and I always try to get out and go to investing in here. I do want to say that I did want to come to you guys this last month because I was interested in the tax lien. Tax lien, but that's okay. It was a good presentation. <laughs> Anyone else do anything? Who wants to do something in the next 30 days? What's holding you back? Time, money, deals. There's people in this room that are doing stuff. So when we're done tonight, talk to the people, network, grab their card, take them out to coffee, and figure out what they're doing, and then copy that. And um, feel free to reach out to John, myself, anytime after this meeting. I mean, People call me all the time, hey, I'm, I'm looking at this deal, give me your opinion on it. I mean, I'm an agent, I list a lot of houses for, for the investors we sell our properties to when they flip, so I have a little bit of experience in the market and what, you know, the differences between Maribel, Munster, Hammond. So if you have any questions on that, don't hesitate to give us a call between the two meetings. So Invest NWI is a premier investment group in Northwest Indiana. The mission of our group is to bring together investors of all levels to provide an environment for relevant real estate investment education, as well as a place to grow your personal network. Um, our guest speaker tonight, I actually met him back in uh, 2015 um, at another group like this that was in Northwest Indiana. And um, some of the, the best relationships I had were people that I met at that group. 
benefits of being part of our group, again, the big thing is just networking with experienced investors. I don't know who came up with it, but I've heard it multiple times. It's been in a lot of books I've read that your net worth is equal to your network. So who you hang out with is who you're going to be like. Um, so if you want to be a successful real estate investor, being part of something like this on a monthly month basis is definitely a good idea. Education through the monthly, monthly speakers. Um, the speakers that we've had this year have done a phenomenal job. We've had topics from tax liens to investment panels to all sorts of different things. Um, and you know, I feel like I have some experience doing this. I learn at every single meeting. Um, and then again, get connected. We have attorneys that are here, contractors, accountants, landlords, property managers, a little bit of everybody. Uh, get deals done. Who's done a deal with someone in the group? Lent money to them, bought a house from them, did a partnership. You know, six or seven people that are here tonight, there's probably three dozen people that have come throughout the year that have done something with someone in the group. Real quick on the disclaimer part, the material and content presented today is for educational purposes only. It's not legal advice, nor should it be taken as such. The content presented is a recollection of the speaker's personal experiences, their success and or failures. You should consult with your own professionals prior to engaging in any activities here. The success of the speaker is not a guarantee that you will be successful. Our speaker tonight has a lot of experience in the Airbnb market. Um, I, and I'll get into it in a little bit more, but I didn't even realize how many he had. I was at a mastermind down in Texas two weeks ago, and a guy there was talking about Airbnb. I'm like, oh, I want to do it in my area. So I started doing some research by going to like Airbnb and VBRO and those different websites to see what sort of nightly rates people are getting. And I saw Tom's uh, super host status. He had like 100 reviews. And I know how difficult it is on Google and Facebook to get reviews to see that he had 100. Um, and one of his rentals, it, the, your old house, it's literally like booked up for the entire year. So I was like, man, that guy has some success. But that's his success. He's going to share his story. Before you jump into that, make sure you definitely do your own due diligence. Um, real quick, if you're not part of the Facebook group and you're on Facebook, go ahead and like Invest in WI Investor Group. That page is a great page for where people are posting um, if you need a contractor or you're having an issue with a tenant. Um, just a great place to get some feedback and some tips and connections with some contractors and stuff like that. We also post our upcoming speakers and special events there. Our two um, vendors that we're spotlighting, uh, and Karen's not here, but Karen is the owner of Property Boss. She's a property manager. Um, she does all over Lake County, um, Hammond, Gary, East Chicago, uh, Merrillville. That's her contact information on there. Um, I have 13 properties with her. And I know a number of other people in here have properties with her. So she's one of our gold vendors. And then our other gold vendor is uh, Maria in the back. She has a table. She's with Legal Shield and ID Shield. And if you want to talk to her at the end of the meeting, she has a couple of great programs. I've been a member of her program for uh, probably about four or five years. Um, especially, you know, the identity theft stuff. That's pretty big nowadays where, you know, I guess they're even stealing, like, your medical identity. So next thing you know, you have $50,000 in medical bills, which is for like a Band-Aid nowadays. But if you're interested in what she does, definitely catch her at the back. If you have a business and you want to learn more about the vendor program, you can catch me after the meeting um, or send me an email um, at another time. So, um, boom, boom. Justin is not here. This is, we're actually going to bump this back to next month. He was going to talk about, um, and this success story is an 8 to 10 minute spot where he outlines one of the uh, projects he did, and he was actually going to talk about one of his wholesale deals. And um, it's a really cool presentation that I'll let him talk about next month. He has like bronchitis or something crazy like that. He sounded horrible on the phone. I told him to suck it up, but um, his wife would not let him come. Um, but I'm going to have him do that next week. He's going to talk about how he turned it into a subject to deal. And um, it's actually really fascinating. The person who ended up buying that deal uh, got a fantastic deal. So in moving forward, if you've done a flip, you've renovated a rental, did the burst strategy, did a loan or something like that, um, and you're willing to take eight to 10 minutes to walk people through how the project went, how it met up with your expectations, reach out to me. We're always looking for uh, a couple of speakers to fill in this spot. We do six to eight of these a year. 
Um, you don't have to have speaking experience. You don't have to be a really good public speaker, but there's always something that we can learn from your project, and um, that way we don't have to repeat the mistakes that, that you guys make unintentionally. So our main event, and Tom, you can come in and switch over here. So Tom Olson with Olson Group is our speaker. He's going to chat about vacation rentals. This is going to be what most people know as your Airbnb. Instead of having an annual lease or month to month, this is where people can rent it by the night, um, three nights, four nights, whatever it is. When I have traveled, I traveled a couple of times with my family this year instead of I have four kids. So for me to get a hotel room that's big enough for four kids, I have a baby. Who here, who's traveled with babies? It sucks. <laughs> And I'm not going to let my wife watch this video, but it really does suck because when the baby has to go to bed at 8 and you're in a hotel room, what do you have to do? You turn the lights out, you all be quiet. I'm like, dude, it's 7 o'clock. Um, so when we were in Orlando, we got a house. And uh, Justin and his family was with me, so it was like, what, 7, 8 kids, 4 adults. We had a 7 bedroom house, a pool. We were there for 7 nights, and it was like 2200 bucks. Now, for our two families, which are fairly big, to have enough hotel rooms where we could all have enough beds and space would have been insane. And then I went to Charleston with my wife last month, and uh, we were right downtown, and the cost for a private apartment that had two bedrooms, because we had to bring the baby as well. Um, babies, golly, man. Um, they're fun. I love her. She's uh, nine months in like a week, so she's super fun. Um, but same thing, for three nights, we paid about $800. The hotels on there were going for about $400 a night. And that would have been a big room, same thing, put the baby to bed at seven, you turn all the lights up, you read by your phone. So it's a fantastic market. Um, I know a ton of people that are making great money in it. I wasn't quite sure about Northwest Indiana, but Tom is crushing it up here, so he's gonna talk about that. But Tom is the owner of the Olson Group. Um, it's a group of companies, they do anything from turnkeys, they have a contracting company that does rehabs, property management, Education, any other groups in that? Or did I hit the big ones? Education. Um, he's been a contractor for over 20 years, an investor for over a decade. Um, he's done over 1,500 transactions, over 600 rehabs. I've sold him probably three dozen houses in the three years I've been wholesaling. Um, personally, I've known him since about 2015 through my old insurance company. So great guy, really knows his stuff, and I think you guys are going to have fun learning from him tonight. Not enough back there just like like I said let me know and then I also wrote a book called active turnkey which I've actually even uh, coined this phrase and even trademarked active turnkey as, as a as a phrase and it, to me it's the best way to buy rentals so this is again free to you guys if you guys don't get enough back there let me know my number will be at the end I, I did only bring a couple I, I didn't know what, what kind of interest they would be but it's a free book for you guys so I just wanted to give you guys heads up on that so how many of you have actually stayed in a vacation rental at some point in time? Oh, wow, that's pretty good. Okay, but actually a lot more than, 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 than what I thought. I, I'm a little bit nervous about this presentation because it's not my typical presentation. My typical presentation, I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur that isn't really good at teaching how to do it. I know how to do it myself. I, 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 can, I can get my teams internally to do it and I can train them to teach it, but I'm not really the guy that sits in the front of the room and says, step one is this, step two is this, this is the research you need to do. That's not me. Good Success is a real estate education company that focuses 
not necessarily on how to teach people how to do real estate, but how to make sure that you have the right kind of success when you do real estate. Um, so this presentation is going to be way different than if you ever see me speak. I'm actually speaking at Deep Realty in Atlanta this weekend. If you hear me speak, it'll be all stories. It'll be a whole lot more um, of a different type of presentation. But today, I really think you guys are going to get a lot out of this. Um, I've done two or three other presentations similar to this, and everybody's been like really eating it up. There's going to be a lot of either notes, or if you guys will allow me to, Adrian, I'm not sure if this is a possibility or not, um, I will be willing to also just send you guys the PowerPoint and, and give, you know, cool. give it to you guys to send the PowerPoint. Um, I promise you there's, there's really no, there's no sales pitches in anything that I do at all in this. It is really just education. It gives, gives you some checklists and some stuff that you guys need to do. So um, a little bit about me. This is my family, my beautiful, wonderful wife of 20, almost one years, 21 years, almost one years, um, is right here, Becky Olson. We were high school sweethearts. Um, and if you guys ever learn, I always like to start at least with some kind of a marriage joke. If you guys ever learn the secret of marriage, please tell me. So um, I'll just leave it at that, right? So uh, Lily is 12. Uh, she looks like she's 18. Um, Evie is 10 going on 16. And Zach is my little buddy. He just actually, he's still four, but we just celebrated his fifth birthday party last, uh, last Friday, Saturday night, and, and had a bunch of, had a great time. So I, I love my family. A lot of people get up here, or a lot of people get up and they speak and they say their family is their why. That's not the case for me. And don't, and don't take that the wrong way. Like, I love my family. My family's part of my why. But for me, I want anything I do, I don't care what it is, I want to glorify God, number, number one, and I want to do it by adding value to my communities. I don't think there's, I think there's only two ways to make money in life. Number one is to add value to people. I don't care if you're a wholesaler. I don't care if you're a fix and flipper. I don't care if you are a rental person, if you're owning rentals, you're vacation rentals, if you're in education, if you're a lender. The only way to make, make money is to either add value to people's lives or rip them off. That's it. Like, there's really only two choices. And I always want to focus on what value am I actually presenting in the marketplace. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Who am I? Start as a contractor. Uh, I, I was a contractor when I was 12 years old. And um, that's kind of how I got really into real estate. I, I went to a, couple, to a couple guys and said, hey, if I can help you find a house, I will rehab the house for you. I will help you get it sold if you'll just do one thing, and that's give me the contracting work. How many of you guys would like to have some contractors like that? All right, Dave? Like, you'd love to have contractors find you deals and also sell them for you and, and do the work, and all you're going to do is pay them for the work. So that's kind of how I got into real estate in 2006, 2007. Um, today I own Olson Group, which is also a, a, a group of companies that has the Olson Construction Management Services and Olson Property Management Services as well. And I did explain this success a little bit already. I've been involved in over 1,500 deals since 2006. I have my own small rental portfolio, which does include regular single-family rentals, a couple duplexes, and um, short-term rentals. Right now we have seven, and I think we're putting up eight in a month or so, whenever the contractor gets done, right? Like, <laughs> anyways. Um, if you ever want to get me frustrated, just let's talk about contractors. And I'm a contractor. You know? So um, I love lending, so I've lent money to lots of different people in this group. Uh, that is a free plug, but I don't think Adrian minds, minds that. Um, so I am busy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I sent some your way, right? Right, front, front, front row up here. Okay. These are the brands that, that, that we talk about, and, and this is, again, who I am and the company. So what is it? I'm going to get right into it. If you guys are taking notes, like take notes. What I'll say before I even get into any of this at all, I in vacation rentals, I was at a conference um, with Walter Ward Warford with the Financial Friends Network, and he said I'm going to start doing vacation rentals. And this guy's been doing notes forever. And I'm thinking to myself, what would possess him to do vacation rentals when he's so he's really against owning property against rent, you know, renting, he's against all that. He always talked about, you don't want to be a landlord. Like, that's all he's ever talked about. Back, same time, he runs around Jack Miller, runs around all that crowd, if you guys know his name. And they're all no guys. And he's like, I'm gonna do vacation rentals. And I was like, okay, if he's gonna do vacation rentals, there might be something in it for me. Um, I also, at the same period of time, I'm a turnkey rental provider. So I buy houses, fix them up, put renters in there, and then sell those rented properties to turnkey buyers. Um, so I kind of 
I, I've built in myself my own little acquisition strategy for acquiring these as lease options if I want to. So think about it. If you're a turnkey buyer, who would you rather have rent your property? Would you rather have a renter rent your property where the average turnover is, what, 2.6 years if you have a good property manager? Um, or would you rather have somebody that's a catalyst, that's doing all the work, that rents the property for you, guarantees the rent for three years, and is going to take care of all the maintenance? Okay, so, that, so some of these properties, I think two of these properties, we are actually leasing. So it's renter arbitrage. So we are, rent, we are leasing the property, and then we are subletting it every single day on Airbnb, on HomeAway, on TripAdvisory, and all these other places. So, so if you think that money is the thing that's holding you back to get into something like that, you just got to change your mindset. You, 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 could, you, you could go out and you can rent properties as long as you're up front, as long as you uh, tell them what you're doing, you can rent the property and then manage it as, as a vacation rental. So just that's that's a quick tip. The other quick tip I'll give you before I get in this is three steps. Number one, act. So this is what I did when I got back from Walter Wolford. I acted. I said, you know what? We're going to put Walter Walter Street. That that's the one that, that you saw. We're going to put this one up. It's been about two and a half years ago. And right now it's my best performing <coughs> rental. It's in Maryville, guys. This is a typical hundred and twenty thousand dollar house. Four bedrooms, two baths. Yeah, it's got some granite. Yes, yeah, it's got some. A little bit of splash, but it's not super nice. It's not as nice as our our rehabs are now for for fix and flip. And it's right now we're we're averaging about four thousand dollars a month on top line, and we're probably averaging about eighteen hundred dollars a month net. So you guys do the math. That's about six rentals for for, for most people. So I acted. So act number one, number two, review, and number three. Does anybody have a guess? Improve. Right? Like, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and you're not getting the results you want, what are you doing? Um, I read an amazing book recently. It's called Scrum. S-C-R-U-M. Basically, I, I, think, I think there's a secondary thing that says the art of getting twice as much done in half the time or something like that. But it really dives into that act, review, improve all the time. So what is a vacation rental? A vacation rental is a privately owned property, property that's rented to travelers on a short-term Basis. So, in some cities, like Munster, Indiana, like Crown Point, Indiana, they do not allow shorter term vacation rentals than 30 days. If you go past 30 days, it's considered rental law. So, if you can, so you can do vacation rentals to people that are going to have longer than 30 day stays in those type of areas that don't allow short term rentals. So, 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 so just, just you know, there's. Basically, the way I look at short-term rentals is there's two different types. It is like the traditional short-term rental, where it's like a traveling nurse, or it's a person that's coming in from out of country. We have people staying right now in our house in China, one of our houses in China. Um, they'll come in, they'll stay for a month, because it makes no sense for them to travel to another country and come here and if they're not going to stay for longer than a month. So you can advertise them for only a month or longer, um, like some of my friends in Richmond, Virginia have to do. or you can do traditional vacation rental. We, some of ours, I think we do one night stays even. Um, it is a little more work. Um, a lot of people that I know that do this don't recommend one time night stays, but if you can get an extra 200 bucks for one night, then it, it is a little bit more work, but you're not gonna make any money unless you work, right? So that's what a vacation rental is. I'm gonna get into some really deep, like in the weeds. So again, normally I don't do this, but what, what to consider when buying a vacation rental? Investing in real estate as a whole, is it a good investment? Is real estate a good investment? Does anybody want to answer that question? Anybody own rentals for a long period of time in this, this room? Okay, awesome. Okay, has it been a good investment for you? Great. Yes. You know, real estate is, is, I hear this all the time. I travel around the country and I hear this all the time. People say, real estate was the tool that helped me do what I wanted to do in my life. And that's why I love real estate so much. But real estate rarely loses in the long term. You can lose a lot of money in the short term. I can promise you. I was going to actually mention this, Adrian, in this in, in your deal thing. But we sold a house this week that I'm going to lose $30,000 on in Highland. It could be in a good area. It could be a good house. It can, it can be, but you can lose money in the short term. But in the long term, 
you rarely ever lose money. In, in, I, I don't see people lose money in the long term unless they went to some new replacement, Las Vegas or something, um, which there are some of those out there. But eventually, like if you look at if you look at our investments in a long span, like 200 years, like. Really start to start to think about. I mean, the properties in 1970s were 15, 20 thousand that are now two, three hundred thousand um, dollars. Can buy with little or no money down. Good credit, bad credit. You can use other people's money to buy real estate. Money, most money that's made, most of the money that's made in the deal is not the deal itself. So if you're a wholesaler, that's great. I think it's a great place to start learning how to acquire good. But you're creating yourself a job. You're creating like a rat race. You are creating, you know, that job. If you're fixing and flipping, you're doing the same thing. You're you're not really investing. In my opinion, there's a di the difference between investing and just creating a job for yourself is 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 very clear in real estate. If you're doing it quickly within less than a year, even the IRS says you're a trader. So you're trading. So just like you trade stocks, you're trading houses. That's what a wholesaler does. That's what a fix and flipper does. But if you're holding for rent, for long-term appreciation, long-term cash flow, that's investing. If you're lending your money, your money's going out, and you want your little soldiers to go out, and you want your little soldiers to come back with more money, more, more soldiers, right? So um, most of the money is not made in real estate. is not made in the first deal. It's made in the deal after the deal. And I've seen this happen year, year after year. I, 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 I can tell you guys, if you guys are not investing in Gary, Indiana right now, you should be. Um, we are seeing prices jump from 30 grand to 100 grand overnight. And I'm not telling you it's going to happen in every single area, but if all the people that were buying in 2006, 2007, and 2008, like right now, are going to be just looking at looking their chops to get rid of these properties. It's that, it's that deal after the deal that you really make a lot of money renting in real estate. So the first thing to decide when you're buying a rental or a real estate or a, a vacation rental is what is your goal. Before you decide how often do you need to rent it, how many nights, so I, I look at it, the way I look at it is if it rents for nine nights or 10 nights, that's, that's kind of like my threshold. If a house is rented, Airbnb or home away, for nine or 10 nights and I break even, then I'm happy. So that's kind of my rule. But for you, you gotta figure out what that is for you. So how often do you need to rent it to cover your expenses? How much net income do you wanna make out of it? Really? And again, what is your exit strategy? You should always, always, always have an exit strategy. The guys that I know that have made ungodly amounts of money in real estate are people that don't fix a flip. People that are not your wholesalers. People that are making tons of money are these people that are finding pockets and going to areas and buying houses, renting them, taking the cash flow for like three to five years, and they understand when to buy, and they know when to sell, and they don't get greedy about it. They, they just make it happen. So what's your exit strategy? Just like a business. If you have a business, you ought to be thinking about how am I going to exit this business before you set it up, as you set it up, and how you, how you build it. So think about that when you're doing this as well. So what else to consider when buying a vacation rental? Where you should buy, right? So key, research home prices. Uh, Adrian already talked to you about how to research. So the, the biggest two websites for vacation rentals are HomeAway and Airbnb. If you don't want to do your own research and really kind of like study it yourself, there is another place you can pay called AirDNA, www.airdna, and it'll basically give you a synopsis of if you put this property on the market, what people are searching for, and how many nights are being booked, and what you can average, what you can think of an average in your area. Um, I will tell you, why I picked Maryville, Indiana for my first rental product, for my first Airbnb. I hate saying Airbnb because eventually Airbnb is going to get upset about it because it's not really an Airbnb, it's a vacation rental, right? So I picked a Maryville because what is on the corner of 65 and 30? How many? Do you know there's, do you know there's over 50 hotels in Maryville? Okay, so. Why is there 50 hotels in Maryville? Do you think Marriott might have somebody, might have some data that says that there's people in that area? I'll tell you another, another great way. Um, have you guys ever heard of extended stay? 
So extended stay and McDonald's. Extended, extended stay in McDonald's has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on research on where to put their locations. So an extended stay knows that, that there's people that are traveling that are going to stay for an extended amount of stay. And is there an extended stay in Maryville? There's actually two. It's a diff there's a sub-brand of a different whatever, but there's, there's two different things in Maryville, Indiana. Um, so the way I look at this is I am not necessarily creating a vacation rental for people to go on vacation to, although you can. And I know, I know some great people that that's what they do. They've got them on the East Coast. They've got them in Florida. They've got them in different areas around the country. But I look at it like, what, who am I competing against? Who is my competition? And if they know something, maybe I should just kind of follow in their, foot, in their footsteps. But then what did I focus on? The second thing I focused on was value. Can I provide a four-bedroom house for $159 a night when if you get a decent, nice hotel, it's going to be about $130 to $180 in Northwest Indiana? At least that's the prices I'm seeing. You go to Hilton Garden Inn, which is a nice hotel in Maryville, it's going to be about $189 a night for just a regular hotel. So if I can provide a one-night stay for $159 and on the weekends maybe $189, that's four-bedroom, two-bath with privacy. Is that value? Like to me, I believe I'm bringing a lot of value into the market when it comes to that. Um, so research these things. The factors um, of rentability include market, the size. I've got a three bedroom, uh, one and a half bath in Portage that I don't think is really sized right. In my opinion, I, we might end up just dumping it. Um, I think the more bedrooms and more beds you can get, the better. So you can add a little bit more value that way. Um, the condition of the property. We we rehab these to the same standard that we rehab our fix and flips. Like we go all out, and then not in, in addition to that, like you better make sure you have a really good designer that's going to come in and put all the fancy crap on the wall and, and the I don't know. She has like my wife does like these eat signs and I don't know what else. We've got three in Miller Beach and so Lake House. They have they say Lake House and you know so you you you're going to have to do all that as well. Um, curb appeal, like all this stuff, all these, you want to add extra amenities to the property. Um, grills, people ask for grills, little fireplaces in the backyard, um, you name it, they're going to ask for it. So this is just two of our, uh, this is just one house. So this is our Lakewood house in Miller Beach. This is what it looked like when we bought it. So the garage was pretty much half falling apart, and um, this is what the house looked at. Like we purchased this property for about 50 grand, and we ended up putting about 60 into it. So we're into this property 110 grand. We get 199 to 299 on weekdays, and 249 to 349 on weekends. This property. It's a four bath, or four bed, four bed, two bath, really large great room. One car garage, and it's about 0.9 miles from Mill Street Beach. You guys know where that's at, and it's about a mile and a half from Marquette Park. But again, like, what's that? So it's not on the water. It's not. Oh no, no, no. If this was on the water, we. So if we had this on the water, this exact house on the water, we'd probably get five to eight hundred dollars. And there are there are some now. This is a house in Gary, Indiana, guys. So this is this. So so I stood up one day because people were asking, "Is this Financial Friends Network?" Because there's a lot of people Financial Friends Network that are doing the Airbnbs, <laughs> and and the, and the guy was like, "Well, this would not work in Jackson, Mississippi. This would not work in St. Louis. This would not work in Gary, Indiana." And Walter gets up and says, "Why not?" And I'm like, "I was with the. I was ha I was saying the same thing. This this not going to work in those areas." And he's like, "Well, why not?" And I'm like. Dang it, Walter, you're right again. So I figured, okay, let's just try it. So this house went live about two and a half months ago, and we've already had 40 nights in the first two months booked. It's about 129 bucks a night. It's right across the street from my office. This also helps me. It doubles because I have investors that come see my office. Like, we've had five in the last week or so. Um, so I, I, I can give them a place to stay. We have events that people can also... I also push my Airbnbs for our events and such. So it's, it's again... It will work if you put in the work. Resources. Again, I already mentioned their DNA. Research your, app, your, your area, where you're going to do it. I know a guy right now in Hammond. He is renting out his studio. 
and it's, it doesn't even have a bedroom, he has a studio, and he has a separate bath, not even a kitchen, and he's getting like a hundred bucks a night, and I'm thinking to myself, you are crazy. I, don't, I would never pay that, I think that would be nuts, but he's, he tells me he's making a thousand dollars a month, and it's his own house that he lives in, so we'll see. There are full service property managers, so if it's something that you don't feel like you can do, um, example, uh, at Evolve and Turnkey Vacation, Evolve is one of those like online portals that can kind of do a lot of stuff for you guys if you want to do it. That way, there all, are also local property managers that maybe want to do this for you, but it's probably going to be a premium, so just so you know, instead of this 8 to 10%, you're probably looking at 20% plus, and I even know people in Colorado that are paying 40% for other people who manage their, their vacation rentals. So um, I would recommend most of the people just, if you're gonna do it in your local area, just try it in your own, try it for your own house. Just try your bedroom. There's a person in Maryville, I mean in Munster, doing, doing just one bedroom in their house, 50 bucks a night, and it's just a bedroom in their house. So um, do you guys all know how Airbnb started? No? Okay, so the way Airbnb started was there was a guy in San Francisco that had that they were trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Like their, their rent just got doubled. You guys know this, the, the San Francisco market is just absolutely insane. So the rent just doubled, like $3,600. And they were having this huge conference that they knew there was not going to be enough hotels in the area for them. So what they did is they brought an air mattress into their house and said, we're going to rent this. They, they, they posted it on Craigslist and all these other sites. And it rented for this whole weekend. I'm like, man, we should try this again. So then the next weekend, they put like two mattresses in there and rented them both. And one thing just kind of led to another. Airbnb is meant basically for you to help rent part of sublet your house um, or put borders in your house, temporary borders in your house. And then it just kind of blew up into this thing where people realized that, like Adrian said, it is so much better to go to a house with your family than, 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 than to do that. So um, once again, what else to consider? So I'm going to kind of get a little bit more deep into some of this stuff. Um, how much can you expect to make each year? So the typical vacation rental, brings in between 5 to 15% of the home's value. Now, I just gave you some examples in which we're bringing in probably more like 30 to 40% of the home's value per year on a gross um, basis. Um, but that's what the national average is. Um, exact level of income is going to depend on you, how well you market your properties. I will tell you that super host status from Airbnb is not easy to get. It took us a year and a half. Um, and it took us to get denied three times before we got it, and like it's not it's not easy. And people sometimes are people, and they are stupid, like my wife says. Um, uh, DNL, right? Dumb and lazy. Um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> exact level of income. It's the inside joke of a better office. Um, competition. So obviously, I looked into this area, and I said there's not a whole lot of competition. So now I know I'm creating much more competition for myself by talking about it. But like, the more competition you have, obviously it's going to go up by supply and demand. However, I'm also going to tell you, yes, maybe there's going to be more people that do it. But right now, we're seeing just this massive rise in people that don't want to stay at hotels. They'd rather stay at these as well. So the demand is rising as well with this. And as you can imagine why, I mean, when I asked how many people had stayed at Airbnb, half more than half people raise their hands. So um, what is the demand in your area? So again, like you've got to figure out what that is by going to those websites, looking at what's available, like that's what he did. Um, look at Airbnb home away and just start looking at houses and say, if I wanted to go in two weeks, how much would it be? Is it even available? I'll tell you, um, in this area, North West Indiana, from my and again guys, I've only been doing this for two plus year, not, not a whole lot. I, I, there's a lot of people that have a lot more experience than me in this. But what I'll tell you, in this area, um, the end of October and the beginning of November get really slow. And the end of January to the beginning of March get really slow. So in February, we typically probably almost lose money. But like in July and August, like we make a lot more money. Does that make sense? So it kind of all averages out. If you look at law of averages, over the long roll haul, we probably average between $800 and $1,000 in net, 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 after paying for cleaning fees, after paying for taxes, insurance. Um, we, we provide um, Comcast for everybody. We provide an alarm system for everybody. We provide, um, what else is on the triple play? 
internet. You have to make sure you have internet. That's more important than than than, than, um, than anything else. So make sure you have really good high speed internet. And and I will also tell you, make sure your places are clean. If you do not have somebody who is the most anal cleaner cleaning, then go find somebody else. Like you have to have somebody that is going to clean like I don't know who might say but like my wife. Um, so. This, this is, was my kind of overview from just Airbnb. So just, just, just kind of make sure you understand that. So for Airbnb in August, I had 50% of my available nights booked, okay, on Airbnb. So just Airbnb out of, the, out of all the houses that we had available and all the nights that could have been booked, 50% of them, it's either 49 or 51, I'm not sure. I think it's 51% were booked on Airbnb alone. So that's not even including Home Away. It's not including TripAdvisory, Bookings.com. Well, there's a bunch of other ones that, that they should be on as well. So the ones that we have been on the longest have been Home Away and Airbnb. Airbnb and Home Away have competed with us for, for a while, but right now Home Away, but, uh, Airbnb has really overtaken it since we've become super host. It really does push up your rankings. Um, so like I said, in, in that, that is just our dashboard for the month of August. So what else to consider? Where to buy? Popular destinations or remote areas? I know some people that like love to get away and they love to bring a bunch of guys and they go hunting, right? Or they go do whatever. I'll tell you, in Texas, for instance, hunting land and hunting cabins are amazing. I think you get like thousands and thousands of dollars per night from these hunting cabins in, in Texas. So like, you gotta determine what's your niche, what are you gonna go after, um, popular destinations are remote. Like, look at the personal preferences and look at your budget. Like, you might just want to start one in the middle of Gary. I don't, people, do you guys know there's no hotels in Gary? There's no hotels in Gary. There's a lot of logistics that come through Gary, guys. Um, remote property may cost less. You might be able to get a super cheap house in the middle, in the middle of Monticello. But you may not get as many nights that book either. So you got you got to determine all that property in more populated densities like Chicago, like downtown areas typically stay booked booked over and over again. Um, and obviously, if there's something to do close by or transportation or some extra perk that you can offer, you're always going to get more rent out of it. Um, the other thing that, that, that we're trying to implement is actually putting things at the property that they can rent in addition to. So like Miller Beach, for instance, one of our properties is 0.9 miles from Market Park. It's really close to Market Park. And we're gonna, next year we're going to have a package that includes like a whole beach towel thing and a couple bikes and a, and a cooler and all that kind of stuff. So but you can make a lot more money on those ancillary sales, just like rentals. You can do the same thing with rentals. You can do that with your Airbnbs. Um, where to buy? Best places to buy? People that like to go on vacation, right? So that's a place that most people think that they want to buy vacation rentals, Florida. But where do others enjoy going? What I said is where are people going? Like I know people are traveling. Do you guys, so in order to get from East Coast to West Coast, people either have to go through mountains or they have to go through Indiana. You guys realize that? <laughs> you have to go through mountains or you have to go through Indiana. Um, I know I'm getting, getting off the slides a little bit, but um, do you guys realize that Indiana as a state has been ranked either number one or in the top two or three in almost every single business friendly category from Forbes, from CNBC, from all those things? Indiana as a state is going to be a place where businesses are moving to and they're already coming here in droves. Um, I really am big on Indiana. It's the only state in the Midwest that people are moving to instead of moving away from. Um, we have a very business friendly governor. We, we, I, I promise you, like, there are people flocking, but smart business from Illinois is flocking to Indiana in the droves. Um, buy close to home or far away, again, it's up to you guys. So these are all things you guys got to decide, pros and cons, nearby, obviously, obviously it's going to be easier to maintain. Me and my wife, last night, guess what we were doing at 11 o'clock last night? We got, we were on our way home from church last night. And we got a text in, on Airbnb, and the late guy's like, I want to stay at your place for two nights. Can it be available tonight? I'm going to be there at 1130 tonight. I'm like, dang it, somebody just moved out of there today. We haven't had a clean yet. We were out there cleaning last night for, for two hours, which we charged 125 bucks to move. <coughs> so we made 125 bucks extra, and an extra 200 bucks a night for the state for the next two days. 
you got, if you want to work, it, 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 it's available. So far away, obviously you're going to have to use somebody else to maintain it for you. If it's farther away, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to deal with with, with that with that distance. Um, where to buy in any given market? Determine why travelers vacation in that area. Is there a major attraction? Um, I'll tell you obviously. Like, so think about if you're in South Bend, for instance. Are you going to raise your price when there's a when there's a, a football game? Oh heck yeah, you're going to raise your price when there's a football game. Um, if you're in Lafayette, are you going to raise the price when there's a Purdue football game or Indiana University or even in Chicago when the Bears are in town? Like, think about. You have to constantly pay attention. We raise our prices on the weekends, and we also raise our prices for holidays. I don't know why, but every single holiday will be booked. I can almost guarantee it. If you have decent reviews, every Christmas, every New Year's, every Thanksgiving is always booked. So, like, I always try to go $20 to $30 um, on the cheaper properties and then, like, $40 to $50 more on the weekends, and then I'll go another $40 to $50 on holidays or another $20 to $30 on, like, $1 to $200,000 properties. Um, if, if travelers seek tranquility and peaceful setting, give it to them. Like, in this area right now, bonfires are really nice to so have, have a little fire pit. Arondi chairs that are like 12 bucks in the Nards right now, if they're left over, um, give it to them. If travelers come for beauty, try to find a place where there's obviously some beauty. Like, if you're in Gatlinburg, for instance, and you're in the city, you actually don't get as much money as if you're up in the mountains when there's, there, there, there's some views. So just think, you've got to think about all these things. Um, the other thing I I'll tell you is to think about how you can niche. So how can you niche? I mean, I've seen Airbnbs that are all around cross-stitching. I've seen Airbnbs that are all around sports. Um, you know, when Portage, the reason why I did the one in Portage, for instance, like right down the road from this, there was supposed to be that huge sports complex. And I'm thinking to myself, like, if anybody, if, if I'm a team, if I'm a coach, and I'm bringing 12 little kids, do you think I'd rather go to a hotel or to a house? Like, I'm going to a house 100% of the time. So, and that right now is not going to happen, but think about that. Um, in, in Hammond, there's a sports complex going on, or, or already gone up a little bit. So think about how you can niche around something in your area. Um, I, I know a lot of guys that only cater to traveling nurses. So they're only looking for those 30 to 60 to three month stays. And I'll tell you, like, you might make a lot less net, but you're not doing the turnover. So you don't have the cleaning, you don't have all the extra stuff, but you're still gonna make like that thousand bucks a month. So you, you might make a little bit less, but like it's a whole lot less risky. And those those longer term, shorter term rentals, I believe like are very valuable. There's not enough of them in this area. So what amenities should you have? Like it's up to you, but hot tubs, swimming pools, campfire, playground, game room, what does your budget allow? <laughs> You know, there are must-have amenities. So kitchens need to be completely stocked, guys. Don't let your husband stock the kitchen, trust me. Like you need as women, we need to have a woman that's gonna go to that kitchen or a chef that's gonna be in that kitchen and say, you really want to have as much stuff as you possibly can have in the kitchens. Coffee makers or curates are a must. Um, anything else you want to add to that thing? What do you have to have as far as like kitchens? Dishwasher, Dishwasher obviously, pot. coffee pot. We keep getting asked for waffle makers, so we just decided to make waffle makers in all of ours. Um, anyway, like make sure it's fully stocked, just like you're going to live there. Like you have to—that's how you have to think. Um, obviously, you need to make sure you Airbnb requires that you have um, dish soap, um, soap for your um, dishwasher, shampoo and conditioner, um, towels and linens. All that ha you have to have that. So don't even try to skimp on that. But make sure it's full. You need to be. Just like it's fully stocked for you to live in. So think, think about that. How many bedrooms and bathrooms? Um, there are some areas, and I'm actually considering about doing a two bedroom right now in Maryville. We just picked a house for like 20 grand. And I'm like, that might be a decent two bedroom in Maryville if we're getting the action we're getting now. But um, from what I've seen is the more beds you can get, the better, but you don't want to go overboard. <laughs> so in a four bedroom house, you probably don't want it to sleep 25. But um, for a four bedroom house to sleep 12 or 14 is, is not really that bad. So you, like for instance, one of our houses, um, the forest house we were at last night, so the, it has three bedrooms upstairs and each has a queen bed. So that's sleep six. The, the, in the living room is a pull-up couch, so that sleeps in our two. And in the basement, we got two sets of bunk beds. So one's a full bunk bed and one's a twin bunk bed. So 
that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14. So uh, I mean, some people need that extra space, and some people will just book it without it. But like we, what we found is if you can sleep at 10, 10, 12, 14, you'll, you'll, you'll get more bookings. Um, again, like I already said, look for a niche if you possibly can. Um, will my home rent? How do you determine the home rentability, vacation rental? Um, has it been a vacation rental in the past? Well, that in this area, that's probably not going to be the case too often. But if you guys buy out of, out of area, you might find something. Um, if there's no rental history, you could talk to other property managers in the air, area. You could talk to me. I could probably tell you what I would do. Um, I don't think there's anybody else I know in this area other than the guy that I think in. Um, review listing, like I said, home away, VRBO, Airbnb. See what other size homes are renting and how much they're renting for. Um, how booked are their calendars? So the reason why I went to Miller Beach is because last year all I could find was three in Miller Beach. That's gone up significantly since last year. Um, but last year there was only three, and they were 100% booked from March 1st till October. And they were on average like 250 a night. So I'm like, holy oh, crap, I'm not buying three houses in, <laughs> in that area. Um, financing and vacation rental. So you can, I don't know how many of you guys are investing in your self-directed IRAs, but if you're not, you need to be. If you need more information about that, please let me know. Um, I am very big on investing in your self-directed IRA, and, and you can invest in real estate. So you can invest in your own vacation rental. However, just make sure that you know if you do it, you can never stay in it, you cannot manage it, you cannot work on it, you, you, you cannot possess it, it's not, you, it's not yours, it's owned by your self-directed IRA. Okay? However, you can loan money to somebody else and do a 50-50 joint venture or something else like that where that other person does all that. So, so just keep that in mind. But you still can't manage it, you still can't rent in it, you, I mean, you still can't stay in it, you still can't work on it, even if you're the lender. So you, so you can finance it by that. You can finance it just like a traditional rental. You, you could finance it just like you would Fannie Mae loans. You, you, you can do that. Um, you can finance it as a second home. You can invent, you could do use private money or a joint venture partner. So most of mine right now are in private money, and I'm switching them. I have two that are with bank mortgages, and two that are actually lease options, and the other two are with private money. That once those loans expire, I will just refinance out with bank money. So that's that's kind of how I'm financing them. But there's many different. I know people that are only using. IRA money or, or investors that invest in them to be able to do these. Um, don't forget about legal. So this is something, again, I'm not an attorney, thank you for the disclosure, so I'm going to use his disclosure, so whatever he said, like, think about that again right now. Um, but, uh, so, what do you, make sure you understand the legal side of this as well. I don't want to scare you with this, but there are some things you do want to make sure you think about before you can. Are there restrictions on short-term rentals? I will tell you there are in Munster and Crown Point. Because this is those two places I wanted, I wanted them. You can do, like I said, the 30 day and longer. But you, but again, like if you talk to one lady over there, they'll probably tell you you can do it. You talk to somebody else, no, you can't do it. I, but I'm telling you, Munster and Crown Point, we've already gone in and asked and had issues with it. Um, what are the zoning requirements? It's possible you may get zoned out of this. Are there permitting requirements? So some cities around the country, we haven't seen this here. I haven't seen this at all in Douglas, Indiana. But there are some areas where you have to get a special vacation rental permit. Okay, so like in a lot of places in, in Florida, is there an HOA that does not allow it? Most HOAs are not going to allow this. Some HOAs will. I know some up in New Buffalo, what we stayed at, they do have HOAs, they do allow it, but they just want people to be quiet. Are there restrictive covenants? Are there even deed restrictions could prevent this from happening? So look at what's going to restrict you from, from doing this legal. Short-term rent, there are laws, and they are state by state. So make sure you check with your attorney before you go forward on, on, on any of this. Um, there's different laws in different counties and even different laws in different cities, like I said, in different towns. Uh, consider, I would consider doing an LLC setup. That's what I would consider you doing. And even going a step farther, maybe setting up a trust, which the LLC is then the partner of the trust. But that's just, that, that's just how, how we do it. Make sure you read the HOA regulations. Um, review all requirements for business license and paperwork because this could be considered a business by many people. 
Um, review your safety and health code regulations. There are some cities that may require different types of uh, um, fire alarms or sprinkler systems or any of that kind of stuff. So you, you have to make sure that you go back to legal sheet, peel back there, right, shameless plug, and make sure they, they look over all your stuff for you, right? So research, property, property insurance is also very important. So you, do, you cannot get away with just having regular rentals, renters insurance. You have to have vacation rental insurance. Now the good thing about this is the price for this has actually come down significantly over the last year. So we, we used to pay about $2,600, $2,800 for insurance, and now we're probably down to like $1,600 to $1,800 a year. But I know it's significantly more than a rental, it's probably twice what a rental is, but it used to be four times. So there's a lot more, and the reason why for that was because there wasn't enough experience in insurance to be able to know what, what the price there that insurance has. Some, some insurance companies were wanting to price it like a hotel insurance. So it kind of is, but you have to, you have to understand now they have special insurance just for Airbnbs. Um, if you, I, I would highly recommend creating your own rental agreement for each, per, each guest that comes in and have your attorney review that or draft it for you and make sure you're complying with local and state law. Things to be mindful of, like I said, insurance. Cost to furnish. So our average right now is about 6,500. So that's the cost to put bedding. That's the cost to put rugs. That's the cost to put everything in it. I will tell you, you cannot skip on. You can skip on beds, but you cannot skip on mattresses. So you have to make sure you have a good mattress. You guys know as well as I do. You go to a cheaper hotel, you're like, oh, why didn't I just go to the Hilton? So. Um, so yes, you have to, have to, have to make sure you buy, don't buy the $200 mattress, buy the $400, $500 mattress. Um, that's the one thing that, that will raise your cost with the more beds you put in there, but you have to have um, part of that. Marketing costs. So as you get larger, like for us right now, we're all seven or eight properties, I am now like getting to the point where I want to have my own separate website to kind of send people through my own branding for each thing, and that's going to cost some money. So there, there could be some marketing costs. Also understand that Airbnb takes a chunk of money, and so does HomeAway. Any other companies out there that's going to take some chunk of money, so just make sure you know that. Credit card fees as well. Um, possible property managers, if you guys do that. Be mindful, again, of government regulations. What is the current attitude? So I'm not just thinking about what's the, what are they saying I can do or cannot do now, but if I know this is a city where like, they've come up with some really ridiculous real estate law in the past, like maybe I'm not going to go and do that. Like, I can think of a city right now in this area, I'm not sure if it's a city or town, that I would be a little bit careful because I, or I might think, like I said at the beginning of this, think of your exit strategy first. You know, so <laughs> I'm thinking already, like in two or three years, is this still going to be a viable option? So think about like, what is that makeup of that? that current administration, that current attitude towards this type of stuff. Um, be very mindful of nasty neighbors. So we've been very lucky. I've only had one guest that have had has one issue, and actually with our Walter house, believe it or not. And it wasn't even really a neighbor. It was somebody that was visiting a neighbor. But um, nasty neighbors, from what I've heard around the country, a lot of people that have, are in this space can be a nightmare. Um, the pit bulls next door can be just as nasty for this as they can be for a regular rental. But neighbors that don't want you there can make your life a living hell. Like they, 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 they really can. So I would recommend bringing treats to the neighbors and coffee and donuts and I, I don't know what else you can do. Take them out for dinner or something. I don't know. But whatever you can do that make sure you prevent. Do not have bad attitude with the neighbors. Try to like let them know what you're doing and um, see see how they are. But be careful, nasty neighbors. Um, I will tell you this is not a truly passive income. So we, I told you last night, me and my wife were out ourselves cleaning, which we normally don't, don't clean. We do a little bit clean them. But on a drop of a hat notice, we had to do it. This is not active. This is not passive income. So with a rental, you know, even if you manage it yourself, you may have like eight, nine, ten months where you don't do anything but collect that check and just take it to the bank, right? That's passive income. You loan money to somebody and they send you a check every single month, like that's passive income. But this is not a pass. This is more business related activities. This is definitely something that is not passing. Taxes on vacation rentals. So talk to your CPA. Disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. This will rise to a level of business, I promise you. They do not consider this as passive income on your 
tax return, this is considered active income. So you will pay a higher rate and you will not be able to. You can still deduct, There's, there are obviously a lot of deductions. There are things that you can claim and all of your expenses you can claim, but it is now active income, not, not rental income. Um, so you'll have different issues with, with where you have them there. So make sure if your CPA doesn't know that, that you tell them that I said it was. If you didn't believe me, you talk to my CPA. <laughs> Um, so most likely, we'll have, like I said, you may also have to pay sales tax. Most likely you'll have to, pay, have to pay sales tax or even occupancy tax. So a lot of cities are allowing these, but they're starting to add in these occupancy, tax, occupancy taxes like hotels. So I know for sure, for instance, in Chicago, that is the case in Chicago. You will pay a sales tax like 14% or something like that in Chicago, and like another 11% occupancy tax. Um, but you can pass that along to the guest. So, you guys ever stay in Chicago? Like you, you, you get quoted a price of like 129, and it ends up being like 250. <laughs> like, you're like, what happened? Um, so anyway, you can also use www.mylodgetax.com to help you figure out what this will be. All right, so I'm just going to give some quick checklists. So taxes, review information on tax deductions, capital gains, LLCs, taxes, etc. Um, research uh, sales tax and occupancy rates for your Situation, set up sales and occupancy tax accounts if applicable. Checklist for vacation rentals for payments. Determine vacation rental goals. Break even point, like I already said. Set those rates. And I'll give, I'm going to give you another hint too. Don't just set your rates and forget about it. I don't know what the deal is. It's the algorithms. It's like it's like Facebook, right? Like if you're not on Facebook, Facebook doesn't show you what you want to see. Um, but so you you want to go literally. You want if you have vacation rental, you want to change your prices every week. You don't change a ton. You just go in there and change like 40 nights. And they make it super easy. You can do it on your phone. But change, the more you change your rates, I'm serious, change it a dollar. It doesn't matter. They just want to see that you're on their, their site. You're Just like Facebook. All Facebook cares about is that you're on Facebook. And these companies are now focused more on data than anything else, and they want you on their site. So um, go in and change your I don't care if you change it up, change it down. You will rank higher in their rankings by changing prices. I can just and the other, the other hint I'll give you is you do not go by what they suggest because they're always low. They're always too low. So like honestly, right now they're telling me it's funny because two houses in, in Miller Beach, one says that I should be priced at two nineteen and the other one says I should be priced at ninety seven, and they're like three blocks from each other and they're basically the same house for like that. Um, so don't go by what they say. You've got to create your own um, pricing for this. Um, devise a method for tracking and recording payments, like QuickBooks or something like that. Um, I'm very fortunate I have somebody that can do all this stuff for me, but like, it is it is a lot more paperwork. It's a lot more um, accounting. Determine method for accepting payments. I made a huge mistake, and I will tell you about this huge mistake. At the very beginning of Walter House, we let somebody come in and stay. I had a realtor that somehow found me and knew that I was going to be in there, or I knew that I had this vacation rental, and this lady was going to pay cash, so she paid $2,400 cash up front to stay for three weeks, okay? And I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Just don't do that. <laughs> Just don't do that. I, 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 honestly, the lady ended up staying for like six weeks. They finally ended up did getting her money, but like after the three weeks were up, we found out that she was a scam artist, and she was like, had another house under contract. She said that she was going to close, and it never really was a viable deal in the first She did have another contract, but it really wasn't a viable deal in the first place. She was even um, conning her, her, her real estate agent. And I, I basically had to like threaten the agent's broker because when you're an agent, now you like have a fiduciary. So now you can't just go out and like, you know, do that. He, he, he vouched for her and I was like, hey, your guy vouched for her. So that's the only reason why I let her in this place. So do not do that. Like just accept payments on the apps. That way you can go back in, and you, we always charge at least $200 for some for um, incidentals in case they do something. We've never taken money from anybody. But I have had one person tell me, hey, I put this hole in the wall, how much is it? And we build them like 90 bucks or something for it to patch it and paint it or whatever. But like he was very upfront and honest about it. But um, you, you, you want that fear in them. You want that fear that like if they leave your house a mess, like they're losing that too. Um, so have all those rules out outlined. Um, create a deposit refund policy like that's kind of really just talking about there. Maintenance, find reliable housekeeping service. Um, create a housekeeping checklist. This is very important. And 
go to the ask, ask me why I know, because we didn't do that first and we had having problems with the house cleaners not doing what we wanted them to do. So um, review, cleaning, checklist, and process, and check in again, like act, review, and improve. Don't, don't think it has to be perfect when you start, but just, just get started. Um, consider resort lock, like lockstate.com, or just smart locks, or for us, like we use the slage, just slage locks, where it's just press the slage, and press the code, and you can change that code as many times as you want. And you can, I, a lot of now you can do with your phones. Um, so consider something like that, instead of just a lockbox. Um, a lockbox in the winter time sometimes gets hard to open, especially in this area. Find reliable maintenance people, because you are going to have maintenance calls. You are going to have maintenance calls. There's bugs in my house. There's the, the, the toilet's blocked up. Like it's just, you got to think of it like a rental, and you're a manager. So you will have property man, um, management yourself. So make sure you have reliable people that can go out and it, does, it seems like it doesn't matter. Every time me and my wife go out on vacation or go out of town, like something happens. So we're going out of town next weekend, so uh, we'll see. Great maintenance checklist, um, complete any maintenance or renovation projects in anticipation for the rental, and no renters care about condition of the property and will comment in the reviews. So take very close attention to what they comment and make sure you go over and beyond and try to fix those, reply to those comments. They're, it's very it's, it's very important. Households, furnish and decorate, home-based. Make sure it's for that target market. So like I said, our beach houses are all beachy. Our other houses aren't necessarily more homey. Um, purchase items. Needed. Save your receipts. They are expenses, guys. Uh, create instruction manuals handy. Create property inventory. I know, like this is this is why I said this is probably better for me just to send to everybody. But make sure you create all of these checklists. This is this is like a checklist of all the checklists that you need to have. So um, create a welcome notebook for people that need to come in. Like that's an awesome thing to be able to have display so people can see all the other comments that everybody else said in handwritten written form. Um, make sure you also have all the local attractions, so all the local pizza places, all the local places to go eat, all the local breweries, all the local um, so what, what's going on at that time of year right now for Hobart and, and Maryville and Portage. We're pushing obviously Lake County, uh, the Lake, um, the County Line Orchard. <coughs> You know, so whatever relevant, if there's a festival going on, make sure you mention that somehow to them. Um, but, but those are things you've got to make sure you have. A well-stocked kitchen, like I said, is a key. Um, decide what you will provide for your guests. Like, we normally like to provide curing cups, but we don't provide, like, if they're going to stay for a month, we're not providing 30 cups. We're just going to still provide, like, four or five cups. And if they're going to go get more, fine. My grills, for instance, if I do have a gas grill at a property, I normally, I don't resupply them with the gas. So, like, and I tell them that. They want, if it gets if it runs out of gas, like they're on their own, go to the gas station and, and get another one. Actually, at one of our properties, I think we have like 10 because I didn't return it. I don't know why they didn't return it. But anyways, um, advertising, um, we've gone over this a little bit. Set up accounts with multiple listing sites. Um, so I, I know the top two are going to always be Airbnb and VRBO right now, but um, or HomeAway. FlipKey is coming into this space really quick. Uh, VacationRentals.com is also coming into this space, like Avengers and TripAdvisory as well. I, I, I know TripAdvisory is is booking many many houses now, so all, I, I would be putting these on as many as you can. And as there are actual services that you can pay for, I don't think I have any in my presentation, but there are services like the MLS, for instance. And once you post a property on the MLS, if you're a realtor, will also go out to Zillow and 32 other sites. They are doing that now with with this as well. So you are services you can pay for that if you post it, then it'll go to all the sites. Um, something I will tell you, you have to do and you have to maintain and check is your calendars. So if you have multiple sites, you can link the calendars, but sometimes they get Katie Wampus. So you've got to like keep an eye on that. Like every single time somebody books for us, we still go and check the other listing sites and make sure it's still available because. Like it messes you up and it's messed us up several times. And it's, uh, like it's worked out for us because we have several properties. But if you only have one property, like you don't have another place to send them. So we've we've given people better listings at the same price if they booked and we were double booked. But like that can be a real um, hurtful thing for you for your rating. For Airbnb, for instance, if you cancel a listing, you cannot get you, you don't you you have zero. You're not allowed to cancel one listing in the whole year, or you will not be super host. So um, anyways. 
so, so be very careful about your calendars. It is very important. Set up and maintain that rental calendar. Stage the home for photos. I highly recommend high definition photos. I don't think all of ours are, are perfect on this, um, but like, make sure that those photos are relevant, are, are new. If you are you have changed the bedding over a year period of time, go back in and change those photos. Um, get reviews from friends and family. So especially on VRDO Home Away, like they don't even have to stay there to give you reviews. So um, what you look at is, Air, is Airbnb, and you can't, you cannot get other people. They have to actually stay in order to get Airbnb. But at Home Away, I think we have like 600 reviews or something because I have to send it to a bunch of people to get reviews. Um, but use your resources, right? Use, use your network. So. Um, I mean, I've got six or seven people that will stay at some of my houses for an event they come in, and I'll like ask every one of them to give me a review. So, um, anyway, so make sure you focus. Every one of our communications with our Airbnb people, like we always are mentioning that we are striving for a five-star review. Like you have to like kind of almost ask for it without saying, "Please give us a five-star review." Um, so I, I, that's just something that we've helped. I would also use social media to get the word out. We haven't done as good a job with this as I'd like to do, but it's something that a lot of people I know do. For renters, create a standard response template. So these are, again, like there's a lot of upfront work that if you do it one time, you can get a VA, for instance, to do a lot of stuff for you. Um, so create those standard response templates. Um, create like check-in instruction templates. Create check-out instruction templates. You know, and that way it's just one email copy and paste every single time. Um, utilize the smartphone app. It is amazing. I like using the smartphone app better than the computer. Create email templates for to inform renters. Create a way to track rentals and guest information. Again, this is something that we're working on right now. I want to try to get them off the website and in my own ecosphere. I really don't like the fact they're like Amazon, for instance. All their information is theirs. So I'm trying to figure out a way to be able to hone in on that, get their own personal information, be able to put them on an email list and be able to get them, because people will come back. I will tell you, like, our Walter house now has been for two and a half years, we are getting, on average, probably one return customer a month comes to Walter. So, like, don't think if you start this thing and it doesn't work super awesome for the first two or three months that it's not gonna work, especially if you start in, like, January in Northwest Indiana. Um, so, give it some time and keep putting in that love and that, and that effort into it. It, it will pay off the long haul. In fall, inform guests of travel insurance, so like they can purchase travel insurance, and if some reason something happens, they will help pay. It is a pain in the butt to, to, to collect from it, but inform them of that. Make sure you determine what your own policies are. So are you gonna let pets come in or not? We do, some people don't. Um, there may be minimum age requirements. Are you gonna allow parties at your house? I know people that do like houses that have like 25 or 30 people that sleep there, and they have parties, and they're okay with it. But they're charging two thousand dollars a night. So um, you got to determine. Like for us, if you have more than four cars, it's a five hundred dollar fine. Um, we are not like putting up with that. I have one house that does complain if there's more than like four cars in, in, in over. But you know, like all, all the rest of the houses we haven't really had a problem issue with. But you have to determine all those policies and put those in your app or put those in your in, in your booklet. Determine whether or not to take security deposits. Like I said, we do summary. I'm not sure where I'm at with time, but, I'm, but we're almost done. So vacation rentals take some work put in the systems. Um, there is a lot of upfront work, but I will just I would just tell you if you're thinking about do it, just do it. Within the next 30 days, 60, 60 days, 90 days, just go get one. Like it, if you have a rental, it is you just turn it over. The next time somebody moves out, just say, okay, I'm gonna try this. And, and make it happen, but don't like don't forget about all those little extra things that are going to pop up. Like you, there's a lot of upfront work, but once the upfront work is done, it can run pretty smoothly. Put those systems in place. Use systems or other trusted advisor systems. So I'm a part of a, of a Facebook group, and I'm also a part of um, a, a coaching system where it's kind of funny. I started doing this before he even did, but he decided he was going to coach people through his own, and now he has. I think he has eight. They think he's running himself. But he's on the West Coast, and you know how West Coast people are, right? They're like six hundred dollars a night or something, whatever crazy. So, um, but he's doing all renter arbitrage deals, and which is basically, you know, he's leasing the property from somebody else, and, and he's re-renting it out. Um, but that group has a lot of really smart people in it. 
so like even me, like I'm constantly learning what new people are doing and getting better myself. You know, even though like I may have been doing it longer than him, now he probably knows more about it than me because he's focusing on training other people to do it. So I'm part of that. Like it costs me like a thousand bucks a year to be a part of it, um, and I think it's worth it. But um, you can use other people's systems. Like he has some really cool checklists that are already they're already there. So like I don't need to really create that checklist because I already have it. Yeah. Um, or you can use a full service property manager. Um, remind yourself that it's not as tax advantage as a single family rental, <coughs> but cash flow can be awesome on a vacation rental. Um, and I love the fact that somebody else pays for my house. I love that somebody else can pay down my mortgage and somebody else can pay, pay the bills on it. Remember, be a conduit, not a bucket. Work to have to give if you guys want my information. There it is. I appreciate Justin Major for putting this group on. This is the best group in Northwest Indiana. I will attest for that. Thank you so much for having me. I just bought my first rental property and was able to act as a broker for my own deal as a realtor. And so I'm interested in doing this, but what could you explain a little more about the cost of fully furnishing, like a three bedroom, two bath, and kind of how that works? Is it a monthly rental fee? Do you just buy it outright? What's the best way to do that? Oh, so we just we just buy it all. We so buy it. Yeah, so it's all up front, but we, I will tell you, we have gotten really great deals at yard sales, really great deal at thrift stores. Um, the stuff we buy new is all the kitchen stuff and all the towels and all the linens, that's all new, and, all, and the, and the um, mattresses. So everything else, everything else can be used. So you can get, if you bought everything you knew, it probably cost twelve to $15,000 to furnish. I mean, it's just about buying all, we never buy brand new beds. Um, we never buy brand new couches. Like there's some places in Cherville. We go to Salvage. Salvage Plus, those kind of places. You get a new couch for 200 bucks. Facebook groups, marketplace. So I mean, that, that's where we furnished everything. It's probably Becky that you can probably talk to her maybe more <laughs> afterwards. But really, I mean, from me seeing the bills, yeah, we just, we just, I put it into the. The, like I'm looking at the deal and I'm saying, okay, it's going to cost six five hundred dollars to furnish it, and that's part of my deal. So we've got we've done as cheap as like forty five hundred. So like our three bedroom one in Portage was probably like forty five, forty eight hundred dollars. Um, yeah, but it's three bedrooms, so it's we did a queen, a queen, and then a bunk bed, and then so that's only four mattresses instead of like ten. So <laughs> make sense. Just kind of curious what your policy is for screening people when they come in. So you don't end up with a wild, crazy party here. Okay. It, it, I will tell you, it's not like Facebook. Like they, there's, they do have profiles. You can see a little bit about their profile. They self, the apps self profile for you to a certain degree, and they have to be verified. So, like, and that's not even my role. That's Actual. I mean, that's Airbnb home away. Like, that's their rule, which means they have to give their social security number, they have to have a credit card on file, they have to have their license on file, you know, and it has to be a real license or a real whatever. So they have to have state IDs or, or from China, for instance. Like, they have to have government IDs. Um, Does that you require or the, the... No, that's what Airbnb home away requires. So, like, honestly, like, we have... Knock on wood, like we, I only had problems by going outside the, the, the apps. <laughs> so that's why now if somebody asks me, unless it's a friend of mine and I know them personally, I will not accept money outside the apps. I will accept money, let's just say somebody's staying and they want to stay for an extra day, like they'll say, hey, I'll give you 150 bucks to stay for an extra day cash. I normally prefer, we normally just send them back to the app and send another request for money. Um, but like I may accept money that way, but it doesn't matter. And like I said, we, we haven't had problems. The biggest problem we've had um, is that one lady that was outside the app and glitter. Glitter. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a glitter bomb went off in the middle of the thing. I think somebody went to Lollapalooza or something. Did they just have a conference? conference, conference concert? I, I don't know. I'm too old for this. So. I go to so many concerts, yes. Hey, Tom. Great presentation. Thank you. 
I have a question about how are you driving business to your website. I know you mentioned changing your prices. You also uh, talked about getting reviews. Are you using any other search engine optimization techniques to drive business? Not currently today, but like I said, I, I know I can do that more in the future. Um, Airbnb and HomeAway are, they are not, they are not real estate companies. They are not even in the vacation rental business. They are data companies and marketing companies. So they're way better at it than I could possibly be. Um, my question is, you did mention to not go with the suggested price. Uh, yes. So how do you determine your prices when you're coming up? How many of you guys have seen this before? <laughs> Is it one person? Those are the wrong All right. Games. Mr. Landlord is like, in my opinion, probably the, the, the best value you're ever going to get to go to a conference to do rentals is Mr. Landlord. Okay. So I just had to say that because I'm going to steal one of his lines right now. Okay. So Mr. Landlord says, and I'm going to say it to you, like the first thing you determine, the first thing you determine even for a rental, what is it, guys? What is it? How much you're going to charge for rent? Okay, how do you determine how much you're going to charge for rent? No. 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 How you determine how much you want for rent is how much do you want for rent? So, seriously, you guys have no idea how much money you're leaving on the table, even on your own rentals. People will, people will rent appliances, people will pay you to do their lawn, people, there are, you, I know people make more money on their ancillary sales in their rental business than they do on their actual rent in the rental business. So, it, to me it's the same thing for this, like I determine how much money I want to get, and obviously with me, I'm, I'm not as out there as Mr. Landlord, but like, really there has to be some kind of market research that tells you you might be able to get that. But I'm always pushing that to at least a little bit. You know, I'm I'm not gonna I'm never ever gonna err on the side of low. I'm gonna err on the side of too high because I don't want that person in my house. <laughs> I I do not want the person in my house that's only looking for price. So I, I'm always looking at the other market and trying to be if there's a, a fantastic house on the beach, I'm not gonna be the same price as that guy. But like I'm looking at how much money I determined like I want to make sixty grand a year on the, 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 the each house in in Miller Beach, and I'm looking at like top line first, and then I'm, how do I get to that top line? What's the deal with Monster and Crown Point? I, I they just don't have any they don't have any laws on the books, so that's why they don't want to let it. It's kind of like one of these they don't know anything about it, so so how are they stopping you? Exactly. No that's, that's exactly what I told the lady. <laughs> well, you just so you know, you can do it illegally. Like seriously, you can do it, but if they catch you, they can shut you down like that. So just, just, and if it, it, I think there's one complaint, but I'm not sure if it's a whole house. You can do it so, if you own. Yes, if you own the house and you live in it, you can do it in Crown Point. You can do it in in um, in Munster, but you cannot like again. This is what the town told me, and Munster told me that they don't have any laws on the books for it, so. They don't really know what it is. Government workers. Oh my God! Yeah. What man? What mattress holds up the fasting for us? Thank you. Yes. Okay. You can find them on Amazon. We don't want to pay about four hundred bucks. Delivered. We we we've done even. They they do have like the one in the box. That fold up, but I don't like just a straight memory foam. You got to make sure if it is memory foam, it like has the extra cooling gel and it's a little bit like a lot more firm. But so we tried a couple different things, but Sam's Club, other places we found them, but Amazon's been cheapest. If you're looking to focus on extended stays, 30 days and longer, where's the best sites, or go in the home away and advertise for extended stays, or is there a site that? people typically gravitate to they're looking for a longer stay. So there are there are sites. Becky, do you know what the name of that one is? Oh man, I'm 
Furnish finders. Furnish finders is one. There's also a nurse finders or something like that. And so there, there are like traveling gypsies or something. I'm serious. <laughs> 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 um, if you get with me, like I can, I can find that information for you. But we we honestly haven't focused enough on that. I really do like that model. Probably even a little bit better than the vacation rentals. You probably make a little bit less money, I think, but I think it's a little bit less risk and it's a lot more money than a regular rental. Um, after I get to 10 on this, I'm actually gonna go to um, uh, senior living houses, because that's that's kind of like my next little thing I wanna have 10 houses at. So, um, we'll see. I'm sorry that doesn't really answer your question, but yeah, no, there, there are some websites. <laughs> Honestly, though, from what I've been told, like Craigslist, for instance, for some reason works for, for that extended stay, and um, going to the actual hospitals or going to the actual, and trying to find who their HR department is that you know people are going to go to. So like, it's always better to have that direct connection. I, I believe, like Adrian says, that your network is your net worth, but I actually think it's even more important that it's your survival plan. So like those personal relationships are so much more important than just a website. And at, what, what we found that by posting on those websites, for some reason in the Midwest, people are cheap. So um, I'm sorry guys, like we're cheap. We are really cheap skates. Like it's, it's, but if you go down south, like you just go to Atlanta, I think it's like three or four times the amount of money they'll, they'll, they'll pay for the exact same thing. Our, our, our real estate prices guys are way cheaper than, we think prices have gone up and we're like, no, guys. Okay. Like, there's no reason why houses in Gary, Indiana, should be 30 grand. The exact same houses in Dallas are like 200 grand. Any other questions? Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's give it up for Tom. Thanks for coming. a lot of uh, stuff tonight. Tom had his contact information up there. If you have a question that comes up, we help this one off. Perfect. Um, reach out to Tom after the meeting, grab his contact information. He's the type of guy that will answer your call, uh, return your email, and answer the questions that you guys have. So, um, real quick on membership. Um, if this was your first time, it's free. If you want to come back next month, it's $10. If we do have some annual options, 90 for an individual, 135 for a couple of partners. Corporate membership is for like a business, it's $500, we give you five cards, you can give that to any of your employees, they can come without having to be a member. We always meet on the third Monday of every month. Benefits of being a member, um, the video for tonight, give me about a week, week and a half, that will be uploaded on the website, there's a member only section, that's where the video will be, that's where Tom's PowerPoint will be, that's all on the a member section. We have most of the videos going back to the first part of 2017, all of the speakers that we've had. So once you sign up as a member, you literally have over 18 months of videos that you can go back and watch at your own leisure. Um, if that's something that interests you, you can catch up with uh, the folks in the back, um, email us, anything, just get a hold of us. Uh, next month, um, we are not going to be here anymore. Um, this place is getting a little bit too small for us. We are going to be at Villa Cesare. That's in Highland behind Home Depot. Um, so if you come here next Sherville. month. Sherville. It's Cherville. Okay. It's behind Home Depot. Um, it is Cherville. It's 900 Eagle Ridge Road. Um, behind the Home Depot. So that's where we're going to be for at least the next 12 months. Uh, their space there is a lot um, larger, cleaner. Uh, quieter, we don't have to hear about the bears getting thumped right now. Um, not. What? Not. Take that, turn that off. <laughs> no, it's a defensive game. Um, so, this was actually, and Tom, I don't know if Tom, you, Tom talked about investing with self directed IRAs. Who has a self directed IRA? If you don't have one, you're totally missing out on the benefits of one. Um, I started one last year, put about 50000 into it. I'm using it to invest this year. I'll make about 20000 How much of that 20000 that I'm making this year is going to be taxed? Traditional. It will be taxed. It will be taxed eventually, 
um, but not until I take it up. So that allows me, you know, if that was a regular flip, that 20, I'm going to pay 50% tax on it. So effectively, I would only have 10,000 to roll into the next one. The benefit of it not being taxed is now I have 20 to roll into the next project and the next project, and I can grow it a whole lot faster than giving all that money to the government. So that's mine. Mine's a traditional. If it was a Roth, it, you never get taxed on it. So we have a guest speaker coming up from Quest IRA. Quest is a holding company for IRAs. That's where I have all my money. They're out of Texas, so they're coming up next month to talk to us about using your IRA. Um, and and they, I have IRAs for my kids that you can only put a couple thousand in a year. They're going to talk about how you can use little IRAs and start to grow those to all the different options that you can do if you own your own business with um, SEP IRAs and Roths and all that fun stuff. So again, that's going to be the third Monday next month, the 15th. That is over in Cherville at Villa Cesare. So everything else is the same, same time, um, 6 o'clock, uh, doors open. Again, find us on Facebook. Uh, we have the room till about 9.30 tonight, so feel free to stay, finish up the food back there, network, grab some cards. If you could help me out real quick before you take off to go see the bears, if you could all stack your row just into one stack of chairs, that would be super helpful. So hey, before you all go, we, um... Oh, shoot. Who's got deals? Sorry. One more part. My bad. Anyone have any deals that they want to sell? Wholesale? Need money? Need money? Greg? Yes. Uh, I got uh, two deals. I got one on uh, Durban Street on the west side of here. Uh, that particular property is uh, 15000 That's what we've done. doesn't need any work. Uh, I got a property by IUN, by the university. Uh, it's a two bedroom, one bath, about 65% done. That property is 15K. Uh, if you're interested, see me after the meeting. We'll just start a minute because Tom's already in. Tom's at 15 15K. Anyone else have anything? Um, yes, I have one. Um, actually, I have a new one located in Western Park. Actually, by IUN um, on 3645 North Street. Four bedroom, one bedroom, one bath. No idea why it's only one bath, four bedroom, no idea why. It's about 65% about done. I would definitely love to make the work in the kitchen. All the plumbing is good. But it's still the It's only been vacant for about three months. Um, right now, we're asking for like five months. Also, uh, so I got some. Anyone else? Anybody else? John has a deal or two. I've got two deals. One in Chesterton and one in Munster. Uh, Chesterton deal is a four bedroom, two and a half bath, um, with a uh, two acres and a bull barn. For starting at 150 and then I've got one in Munster that's coming online tomorrow which is a three bedroom one bath and that's starting at uh, 129.9 <coughs> ranch bread full basement yes that's a 250 ARV too and it's not that bad awesome cool thanks again for your help tonight stack in the chairs and we'll see you next month Uh-oh. Man, I'm bad. I forgot the raffle. So here, I got...